This is the final question in our 2D arrays mock test. So if you're in grade 12 IT and you need some practice with some 2D arrays, then this can maybe help you. So let's look at the final question of this paper. Just some context, we've got a treatment center where the first four rows represent the stories of a treatment center and they can take four beds in each of those rooms. Each column represents a room of a story of a row. So this is story one, which is row one, and there are five rooms and they each can take four beds, but level two, which is five to eight, those rows, they can only take one bed each, just so that you understand the context for the question five. Now we add question five and just some tips whenever you're dealing with the last question of any test or exam, remember that you're probably running out of time. So the key is to get as many marks as you can. So do the little bits that get you the marks and add on and add on. As you can see, you can get as close to the answer as possible by just adding on little bits here and there. But make sure you maximize your marks. Complete the code for BTNQ5 that prompts the user for a value of one or two, which indicates which level of care the next patient to be admitted needs. So either a level one or level two. So let's just do that part quickly first. So we're going to come here and we're just going to ask for a prompt for the level. So a variable I'll call our input of type integer. And we're going to use a prompt, which is an input box. So our input is equal to an input box uh, level enter level i'm going to give them the option of one or two so they can see that and what i do in exam or test is i put a value in there straight away so that we can not waste time having to type things up but remember input boxes return string so we want to put this into an integer so we want to convert this from a string to an integer and put that whole thing in quotes i'm missing a quote over there i think as well okay so there we go. there's my prompt okay First part done. Once we've got the prompt, if the user gives a one as the level of care, then the patient will be placed in one of the rooms in the first four stories, as we mentioned in the, in the scenario. These rooms can take four maximum patients. If the first room has less than four patients in it, then the patient will be placed in that room. So we need to determine which room doesn't have four patients in, in the first four, because if it doesn't have four patients, then we've got space. If the first room has four patients in it already, then the next room must be checked and so on. So we need to go through all of the rooms and determine which room is the next best room for that patient. If the user gives two, then we're looking at the other four levels, which is rows five to eight, and they can only take one patient per room. So if there's one in the room, then we've got to move to the next room. Basically, we're looking for the zeros. Okay, so that's two. It's quite easy to do if it wasn't for these different rows. So determine the first available room for the patient according to their level of care. So the first available room message must be displayed that specifies the story and the room. So the row and the column that we has space and the appropriate value must be updated. In other words, we must add one to it and then we call the display procedure so that it must show you that it's been updated and a new person we put in there. If there's no place in any of the rooms on all stories for the level care, then a message must be displayed. So they give me some examples over there. So this is quite complicated. So to get the marks, I'm just going to work with level one. Let's just get one level working and see how we go from there. So we know we're going to do the first four rows and we're looking for any room or any value in the array. Because remember, the array has numbers that tell us how many patients are in each room. We're looking for any value in the first four rows that are not a four. And if it is, then we've found a value. So let's try to do that quickly. So we are looking for the first place and we want to stop when we find the first place. So first of all, I'm going to make my looping variable, which is going to be my R row variable. And then I'm going to have a B found, which will tell me if we found a room or not, which will be a Boolean. And so we are going to assume that we haven't found anything yet. So let's go, that is false. And my R row is going to start off being zero. And we are going to keep looking. So we can use a while loop. We've got while, while our row is less than four because we're only looking at the first four rows then what do we want to do well we're going to say begin end for my loop for my while loop that's the end of the while loop and we're going to increase our row so it becomes a one and then when we loop again we can make it a two and then a three and a four so that's 
basically creating my for loop effect but i've used a while loop instead because i also want to stop looking when we found a room so b found equals false while we're not at the fifth row basically once we put just before the fourth row and while we haven't found us a room keep looking for a room so that's what we do whenever we search now that we've got that i need to check if the value in array rooms and we are looking at our row then which column are we looking at well we've got to loop through the column so if you think about what we did before if we had a single array we would loop until we reach the end or until we find a place but now we're not just looping till the end of this but we also loop into the end over here as well so we're almost doing that search twice so i need to do all of this again but now we are looking at a particular column so i'm going to start our call at zero as well so let's make my r call variable so if you think about your searching through an array like you did in grade 11 you're doing the same thing but you're doing an inner loop that's a search and an outer loop that's a search as well so while that's the first four we are going to loop so we initialize it to zero there actually we're going to actually put that inside here because we're going to do naught or one basically one to five every single time for each column so that's why i put naught equal to there and we are going to while our call is less then now how many columns are there there are five columns so while it's less than five we're going to do this code and while b found equals false so once b found is found once it's equal to true then both of these will stop then we'll stop the whole process so let's have our begin end over here for my end of my so this is the end of my outer r row loop and then this is the end of my inner r call loop because we want to loop if you in a particular order we first want to we want to go through each and every column first so that's my in loop and then if that's not working we're going to move to the next row so that's why we do the column loop first and then the outer loop is the row loop that value we need to increase our call so that it becomes it was a zero it becomes a one so we're looking at row one our call column one if that value is not equal to four because it if it's a four it's full but if it's not equal to four then we have found a room that is available in other words be found is now going to become true and we need to record which row and column we're at because if you remember we got to display which story and which room because the row determines the story and the column determines which room so i'm going to record my basically my answer my recorded i'm going to call this room uh story not sorty story so we're going to say okay well we found something so the room is going to be wherever we at now in the column value and my story will be whichever row we are at so that's going to tell me so i'm recording where we are at and it says if i remember correctly we must update that particular field it says the appropriate value in the array must be updated for the new patient so therefore we must actually update it so in other words that room has an available bed so we need to then increase the value at a array rooms are a uh, uh, call because we are taking a bed giving that person a bed and then we must display the array remember we made that procedure display area sorry so that we can show that it's been updated because remember although we've updated the array it won't be reflected in the string grid and we can only see the string grid so that's going to be happened so that's let's think about this logically this loop here is just a normal search through an array from grade 11 you have a found variable which you set to false you start from zero you loop until the end of your array and you increase our call and you check each value and then once you find what you're looking for you set it to true and record its position the difference with a 2d array is that you are doing this inside another search so that while you are looping through here if you find the right value in the row you will stop but if this is all full you move to the next row and you keep going and go oh this one's available and then you stop in that particular column so you're not only stopping at a particular row but you're stopping at a particular column as well so that's why you've got almost a search algorithm inside of another search algorithm and then once that is all done once the loop's all done we can then go if be found equals false that means we haven't found a room yet then we can show message and i just typed it no room available in that level but if there is 
is a room. That means B found will be true. If we get to here, if we've gone through both loops and it's still false, that means there's no room. But if we get to here and B found is true, then we have found a room. We recorded its position. We increased it already. We displayed the area. We could have actually displayed it there as well, but I'm going to display it over here. So to show a message. So I went and typed it ahead. So just remember, we want to change that six to whichever story it is and the value for room at the room. So quote, quote, plus, plus. And then between there, we're going to put our story. And then on a new line, we're going to say room we're going to put quote plus our room but these are integers so we're going to convert them from integers to strings because we're displaying them in a show message and then the same with this one so let's display it and see what it does at the moment it only works for level one we've only done level one so let's just see how this works and then we can see what we can change to make it work for both levels. So only looking at, so we can see the, the first available room is definitely there. So if I say next available room for level one, one level room three, which is correct. And if I do it again, level one, that'll fill it. Great. And then if I do it again, great. That is now full. Now, if I do it another time, there's no more room in room three. It's going to have to move to room five. There we go. Story one, room five, and then increased. So that's great. Now, how do I make this work for level two? Well, we are only going to go from row one to row four for this level. And then the max number of values in each room is four. But in this case, we're going to go from five until eight and the max value is one. So maybe we can just use the code like we've got here, but we just determine new ending points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to record a couple more integers. I'm going to record the R max row and the R min row, and then the R max beds. So I'm recording these three values. What I wanna do here, let's put a little comma there. We're gonna get the input. If the input is a one, then we know that there are three values we must be aware of. Our R max or min row, sorry. We start off at, row, at story one, and we're gonna end at story four. And the max number of beds in these rooms is also four. But if it's not a one, that means if our input equals two, I don't know if you even need to say that because it's either going to be a one or a two. If that's the case, then we've got the same three values that we want to set, but they are slightly different for the second level. For the second level, the first row, if you remember correctly, is row five. So we're starting at row five and then we are ending at row eight. And then our max number of beds in that is one. So let's remember that. Remember this for 144 four works at the moment. So we check that the room is not equal to four because four is the max number of beds. But if it is a level two, we want to check if it's a one. So instead of be doing another if statement, yeah, I can just ask it if it's equal to the R max beds value. Because if we said one, it will use the four. But if we said two, it will use the one in that case. So that's a nice little trick there. The other thing is to get the loop to go from one to four or five to eight. Now over here, it goes from zero to four. Okay, so four is the the max value of my rows. In this case, it's going to go to four, but if it was level two, the max row would be eight. So therefore, I don't want to go to four. I want to go to the R max row. Whatever the max row is, you go till then. But my starting value, if it was level one, we starting at one. If it was level two, we starting at five. Yeah, we start at zero and then we increase it to become one, two, three, four. So what happens if I start it at R min row, but it's not a one minus one. Let's start at that. So remember, if it's a if it's a level one, our starting row is one, which means we're going to take that one minus one. We're going to start at zero. That's going to make it a one and then check for row one and then row two and then row three and then row four until it's less than the max value of the max row, which is four. If it's level two, we're going to take the five minus one, which means it's going to be a four. And we're going to then increase it to a five and check row five, check row six, check, check row seven, check row eight. And eight will be the max row that we must stop at. So by just doing this little trick over here, probably worked out for any particular scenario. So let's try it. That's probably the quickest way to solve it. So the first available bed in level one will be story one, row three. That is correct. But if I do level two, the first available room is story six, room four, which was that room over there. And the next one is actually row seven, number two. If we do this again and do a two, there we go. And let's do the next one. 
and let's do the final one and you'll notice now that all of the rooms in level two are full so if i do two one more time there's no more room available for this level so there we go we can see that it's working for all the cases so there we go that's how it works that's probably the quickest way to do it it was quite tricky but i'm sure you can work around it and that is our 2d array mock test how did you do if you struggle with these videos, then maybe you should go revise 2D arrays by looking at our playlists and seeing what we can use there to help you. And remember to click on the subscribe button so you don't miss if we post new videos and mock tests. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.